Hey guys, in this tutorial, I will show you how to connect your project to Firebase and how to save data to Firebase real-time database. So let me show you exactly what we will do in this tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we have built the UI for our contact list app. So we have a simple UI app that has one floating button. And if you click on the floating button, a pop-up dialog fragment would appear to add or save a contact. And if you click on save contact, this contact should be saved in Firebase real-time database. And just like that, we were able to successfully submit our data. So let me show you the data in Firebase. So here is Firebase and if you go to real-time database, as you can see, we have our context node. And as for now, we have only this contact that we have just submitted. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys. So in the previous video, we have built the UI for our contact list app. In our contact list app, we have few classes. And the main one that we will use in this tutorial is the contact class. We will use this class to save the contact in, and we will send contact object to the Firebase to store the contact. And the second class is add contact dialog fragment. This is where we will set on click listener on the save button that we have in the dialog fragment and take the text field values and send it to the contact class so that we can make an object and ultimately send that object to Firebase. But first, I want to show you how to connect this project to Firebase. So if you go back to your Firebase console and you need to go back to your homepage and then click on add project and name your project and click on continue and continue. And you can select your account. In this case, I will set it as default account for Firebase and create project. So you need to wait for a moment until the project is being created. All right, so once your project is ready, click on continue, and then you need to go back to under studio so that you connect this app to Firebase project. And to do that, you need to go to tools and then Firebase, and you need to click on real-time database, and then click on get started with real-time database. And these are the steps that you need to connect your project to Firebase. So first we need to connect to Firebase and click on that. So once you have been forwarded to your Firebase console, you need to select the database or the project. In this case, we have contact list Firebase and click on that and click on connect. And as you can see, your Android Studio project is connected to Firebase Android app. So let's go back to Android Studio. As you can see, we have been connected. And now you need to add few dependencies. So click on add real-time database SDK to your app and click on accept changes. All right, so once your dependencies has been added, you need to close this because this is it. And one more thing, you need to go back to your Firebase console and click on your project. And then you need to go to real-time database. And once you are there, you need to create a database and set few security rules to it. So click on create database and just click on next. And in the security rules, you need to go to the test mode. If you are not in the test mode, and then you cannot read and write. So enable that. All right, at this point, our app is connected to Firebase and we have created a database in Firebase and we have changed the security rule to test mode. So once you have done this, this is it for database connection. All right, so first you need to go to your contact class so that we add a constructor to receive few parameters so that it will be the field names for our contact nodes in real-time database. So let's do that. First, you need to add a data extension to your class, and then this should be a constructor that would accept few parameters. So let's add an ID, var ID, and the type of this would be a string, which will be nullable, and then we set it to null. And then we need the full name for our contact, so var full name, and this would be string and nullable, and we set it to null. And then we need to add a contact number, so var contact number, and this would be string equal to null. So this object would be for one single contact. Each time we want to save a contact number, we need to create a contact object of this class and we will pass these values to it. So the full name and contact number would be stored in our real-time database. However, the string would be auto-generated by Firebase, but we need it here so that we can identify these objects later on. And we do not want to resave the ID to the Firebase. So we need to exclude the ID, get exclude and this is how you exclude the next field so we will exclude only the id but we will store these two in the real-time database so once we have done this you need to create another class and this would be a kotlin one and we will name it as constant and in this class you need to create one const val and we will name it as node contacts and we will set it as 
contacts. So this would be the name of our node. In other words, our table. And once you have done this, we need to create one more class for our view model class. And the view model class would act as a controller or the middle way between your app and Firebase so that we will put our functions there, such as add contact, view contact, update and delete one. So we will have all of the functions that we need to interact with the database in the contact view model. So let's do that in UI package. So let's create one more Kotlin class and we will name it as contact view model. And in here you need to extend view model class. So view model, and this should be a constructor. So once you have this ready, you need to create an object for our database connection. So private file, and you will name it as DB contacts. And this should be Firebase database and then get instance and then get reference. This is how we refer to one node and we need to refer to our context node that we have created in constants Kotlin class. So just write node context. As you can see, we have this contact nodes constant in our data package. This exists in our constants class. So click on that. And just like that, we have imported our path and we have our reference. And one more thing, we need to create a mutable live data. We need to keep an eye on if the data has been submitted to the Firebase successfully or not. So this would be a type of exception. If the data has been submitted successfully, we set it to null. And if not, we need to print that error message in a toast message. So I will show you an example. So private val, and this would be underscore result, and this would equal to mutable live data. And the type of this would be exception, and this could be null, and we need to add a constructor. So once we have this, we need to create another result on variable, and this one should be a live data, so that we can have an observation on it. So exception, and then this is nullable, and we can get from our result object that we have. So we will store the result in our mutable live data. And if it's null, that means our data has been successfully added. If not, then we need to store the exception in this so that we will have another result with a live data and we can have an observation on this live data later on in different classes so that we can keep an eye on this. If this changes to an exception, and that means we have an error. If this is null, then that means the data has been submitted successfully. So this is why we have this here and we will use it in a minute so that you have a clear understanding on why we need a live data. So to add data to Firebase, we need to create an add contact function. So function add contact, and this would accept a contact object and the type of this object is contact. So we have an error because we need to import our class. So we need to set the values that we have in contact class. We have an ID, a full name, and a contact number. And this could be an object and we will send that object to Firebase. However, we have excluded the ID for this object and we need to set it manually so that we have it only in this object so that we can refer to it. So if you go back to your view model and here we are accepting a contact object and that object has a parameters that you have. So the ID of this would equal to our DB contacts, our Firebase connection, and then we can use push function and then dot key. This is how we generate a key in Firebase for this object and we store that ID in our object. So this is only would be for a reference later on that we needed to update that object, to delete that object. So we need to refer to an ID in our object class. And the way to save the full name and contact number is just passing this to Firebase. And Firebase will compare the fields that we have and save it to the database. So DB contacts dot child, and then we need to pass the ID of the child. So we are adding or saving this contact to to this ID that we have just generated. And then the way to save the data is set value, and then we need to pass the contact object. And Firebase will deal with saving the contact. And a good practice is to add on complete listener so that we know if our data has been submitted successfully or not. And we need to have an if statement. So if it, so that means if the task is successful, that means if it's uh, submitted successfully, and then we need to get the result 
table that we have just created here, our mutable live data. So dot value. So we are setting a value to this mutable live data and we set it to null. So later on we check if this is null, that means the data has been submitted successfully. If not, and then we need to set the value to the exception that we are getting. So now once we have our add contact ready, we just need to go to our add contact dialog so that we set on click listener on the save button that we have. So that once we click on save contact, we would take these values and send it to the Firebase. So first we need to access add function that we have in our view model. And the way to do it, we just need to create an object of contact view model in this class. So private late init var, and we will call it view model. And the type of this would be contact view model. And we need to initialize this in on created view right before we return view model. And this is equal to view model providers with an S and off this fragment. And then we need to get the class and the class is contact view model. And this is Java class. So once we have initialized this, we need to override one method, which is on activity created. So once the activity has been created, we need to keep an eye on this result data. As we have said, we have a live data and live data could be observable. So we observe if this changes to a null or an exception so that we know if the data has been submitted. So we need to get that from the view model object that we have and we have the result and then we have an observe function and then we pass view life cycle owner and then this would be observer and just like that this would be an exception as you can see we need to store the message whether if it's a successful or not so val message and this would be an if statement and if it equal to null that means our data has been submitted successfully. So we need to save the message and the way to do it, we can get string and the string would be resources dot string and let's name it added contact. And at this moment, we do not have this class name in our um, values and then strings. So we do not have it here. It's either you create it from here or you go back here and just add it from here straight. So create a string value and this would be contact has been added successfully and just click on OK. And just like that, we can retrieve our value from the strings that we have in our strings class. So we need to have an else and we do the same. So get string and this is resources dot string and then dot error, which we do not have. And we need to pass the message. So it dot message. And just like that, we need to go to our string class. And in here, we need to add a new string. And the name of this would be error. And the way we concatenate or send our string to this is just like percentage sign and then one dollar sign s. So once you have this, we need to go back to add contact dialog fragment. And then we need to show the message to the user. So whether it's a success or not, and we need to toast message and then dot make text. And this is require context. And then we pass the message to this and then toast dot make dot length short and then show the message and we need to dismiss this in the end. So once we have this ready, we need to set on click listener on the button itself so that we send the data. We need to get our binding dot button add. So set on click listener to this. So let's create two more objects. So val uh, full name and this would equal to binding dot edit text full name and then dot text and then dot to string. We need to convert it to string and then dot trim. So this is how we get the value from the field and we need to create another one for contact number. And this is binding dot edit text contact and then same to string and then we need to trim it. So once we have these, we need to add some validations to the field so that we will not send an empty string to our Firebase. So if full name is empty and then we need to bind our edit text full name and then we set an error to this and the error is this field is required and we need to return from on click listener and we need to add one more validation for our contact number. So if it's, it's empty, then 
we need to bind our edit contact number so this dot error and you will set this as this field is required and we need to return from onset listener and just like that we are done from the validation so if these fields are empty we need to show an error message and if it's not we need to proceed and the way we proceed we need to send our contact object to our add method so val contact and this equal to contact and we need to import it just like that we have created one object from contact class and we need to set the values to this contact. So we have contact object and then dot full name and this equal to the full name that we have here and contact dot contact number and this equal to contact number that we have. And once this is ready, we need to send it to the add method that we have in the view model. So view model object dot we have add contact and this would accept an object of type contact, the one that we have just created. So just pass contact and this should be it so what we have done is basically we are observing on whether there is an exception or not and then we set an on click listener to our add button once you click on the save contact we need to get the results and put it into two objects and then we validate it whether it's empty or not and set a text error message if it's not and then we need to create a contact object that we have here and we set these two values to these objects and we pass that objects to our view model and in view model we accept that contact object and we generate a key and then we set the value of our child in our database to this contact object so we are saving what we have receiving and just like that we are done so to see the result we just need to run our app all right, so if you click on the floating button, so let's add a contact. So if you click on save contact, we should be able to save this contact in our Firebase database. So let's click on save contact. And as you can see, our contact has been submitted successfully. And let's go to our Firebase console to see the result. And just like that, we have created a contacts node. And if you open this, we have one contact. And this is the contact that we have just created. And we have an error here. And this is because we are not getting the the value from the text field so let's fix this and this is because we have forgotten to add the text here so text dot to string to trim so this should fix our problem and let's run our app and let's add a new number and if you save the contact and the data has been submitted successfully let's go to Firebase console and we have it here and just like that we have the number saved so all right guys this is it and in the next tutorial I will show you how to display these contacts in our recycler view so see you guys in the next tutorial and happy coding